Today I'm going to show you an extremely useful, ultra-compact, one-handed multifunctional tester that's a must-have for electronics hobbyists or electronics technicians. What you see right here are DT71 tweezers. These tweezers have the ability to measure resistance between 0.1 ohm and 15 mega ohm, capacitance between 0.1 picofarad and 400 microfarad, inductance between 1 microhenry and 50 millihenry, DC voltage between 1 millivolt and 40, which is ideal for testing the great majority of circuit boards. You also have the ability to test diodes and LEDs, measure frequency between 10 hertz and 20 megahertz, and believe it or not, it also has a signal generator that produces sine waves and noise between 200 hertz and 100 kilohertz. Let me remove everything from this case so we can take a closer look. Right here you can see the body of the tweezers, each one of these pointed tips are replaceable. You can see there's an extra pair right here. Red is positive, the other side is blue, and they are gold plated. Now with the body, you can see it's springy. Now the springiness is not due to a spring. Right over here are two magnets that are opposing each other, and that's what gives you the springiness that you're feeling in the tweezers. To use this, all you have to do is take the top section, press it all the way into position on the tweezers. The DT71 tweezers are made by Miniware. When the head is plugged into the tweezer body, the weight is right around 22 grams. The good thing about these tweezers, and I'm going to show you in a minute, if you're right-handed or left-handed, the display will automatically adjust. To charge the tweezers, you take this USB cable with the stereo jack on the end, Plug this into the tweezer body and plug this into your USB type A. When the tweezers are fully depleted, it takes approximately two hours to fully charge it up. When the tweezers have a full charge, you can expect approximately 10 hours of use. The only time you're going to use this cable with the USB type A to the female stereo jack, you would take the head, plug it all the way in, connect it to your computer, and you'd be able to upgrade the firmware. More than likely, you're not going to have to do that, but if you did, you have the cable to do it. Here's a closer look at the tweezer body. Pointed tips, ideal for surface-mounted components. You can see the magnet right in there, and there's another one on this side. And these are extremely comfortable to use, one-handed operation. Looking at the top, you can see it has an OLED display for better viewing angle. And on the very end, right over here, all you have to do to change the settings is just touch this. That's it. You don't have to press, you just touch it. And here's a look at the back side. All right, let's connect it up and test it out. To turn on the unit, you're simply going to hold the body of the tweezers, push the head all the way in, and you can see right over here it says RX, so it's measuring resistance, and the M at the top means manual mode. If you want to switch to measure capacitance or inductance, you would use your finger on the very end. Now if I just tap over here, D for diode, Capacitance, inductance, frequency, voltage, back to resistance. Now if you hold this in your hand, if you're lefty, you're going to flip it this way. And now the display is going to be reading correctly for you if you're left-handed. Hopefully you can see that. So let's go back this way. And you can see it flip back over. So now the next thing I want to do, if you want to switch to automatic detection, push and hold once. Now it says identify. Letter A, that means automatic detection. It works well, but it's not perfect. Once in a while, it may not work properly because if you have an inductor, it may give you a reading for resistance. So it's not perfect on the automatic mode. And that's why I like to use the manual mode. But let me just push and hold now. Now it's a signal generator. We're gonna be testing this out on the scope, see what it looks like in a minute. Touch it again. 
select between noise and user, pulse, push and hold. You want to have the probes perfect. So you want to touch it together, it says. And now it says open tips. Keep open. Save. And now you're done. So now everything should read zero or very close to it. Now let's take a look at the range for each one of the settings. Let's start with this one. 0.1 ohm, 0.2, and the high end should be around 15 megs. Let's see here. 15, and if I go higher than 15, it does not work. So 15 is definitely the limit. And right here, what's good about this, if you have any little chips, this one here is extremely small. You can measure the resistance. And that one is five megs. The DT71 tweezers work very well at checking components on circuit boards. The only thing you're gonna run into, and it does happen fairly often, if you have a resistor in parallel with a capacitor, it's going to be very difficult to get an accurate reading for either one. If the circuit loops back, so if you want to check this one in the center, and it's connected to this resistor, and it's looping this way, connecting to this side, you're not going to get an accurate reading. And that happens quite often, and there's not much you can do about it besides desoldering one side of the component. Now let's take a look at capacitance. This one here I believe is a 1.8 pico. Close enough. According to the company, it should work up to 400. Always short the terminals on a capacitor before measuring. So 415 range. And this one here is a 1000. Wow. Oh, so it's working all the way up towards 1000 microfarad. You see it? 890, 890. Yep, so it works way above the 400 that they said. Now we're going to measure the inductance of some components. 1.1 microhenry. This one here has a 221 on it. That means 220. So it should be 220 microhenry. Yep, 221. Good. Let's go a little higher. What is this one? 35.5 millihenry. And let's keep going. And you can see it went 66.6 .6 and it went off. So it's exceeding what they said was around 50. Take a look at the diode setting at one of these on the switch mode power supply board. Nothing that way. Flip it around. It should work this way. Yep, 647 millivolt. Now let's take a quick look at an LED. We could test the LEDs on here. 2.69 volts forward voltage. And the whole strip of LEDs is active. There we go, 2.69. Connected to my power supply, and you can see around three or four millivolt. Let's increase the power. It's a half a volt. And let's go higher here. Five, five, 15, 25, and and my unit maxed out at 32.4. So measuring up to 40 volts should not be a problem, but the manufacturer says never exceed 50. Right over here you can see the signal generator is set for the maximum of 20,000 kilohertz or 20 megahertz. And you can see right over here on the DT71, 20 megahertz. Let's bring this all the way down now to the lowest for this, which would be 10 hertz. Over here, 0.01 kilohertz, and you can see 10 hertz. 
if we go lower, I don't think it will work. Nope, it actually cuts out right away. Comes on at 10. Let's put this up to like 29. 50. Now the DT71 is being used as a frequency generator. Over here, sine wave 10 kilohertz, and you can see 10 kilohertz and the sine wave. The DT71 is now set for a 10 kilohertz pulse. And there it is right here, the square wave, 9.95. Right here, you can see the DT71 can also be used to generate noise. As you just saw, these tweezers work extremely well, and they're definitely going to come in handy for many people. If you have a pile of SMD components, you can pick them up really easily and check the values. The one thing I noticed is if this turns off, all you have to do is just pick this back up, move it around, and in a few seconds, it turns right back on. If it doesn't turn on, you're going to have to just pull this head off and push it back into position. And that's all guys, I hope you enjoyed this video.